Hi, everyone. Welcome to Quilt Talk. Today, we're going to take a look at my quilt called Summer Star. And you might ask, what is Quilt Talk? Well, we're just going to take a look at some of my quilts in depth. And Summer Star is one of my Lone Star Illusion quilt designs. And you might wonder, what in the world is a Lone Star Illusion? Well, let's take a look at the quilt. I have it behind me. Now, this is a Lone Star design, but it's done a little differently. And the reason that I call it Lone Star Illusion is because there are no diamonds in this quilt. It's part of my Lone Star Illusion quilt series. Now, when you look at this, and I'm going to move out of the way so you can look at it, those are diamonds. Well, they are, except they are not pieced like diamonds, but they appear as diamonds. So let's look at the quilt a little bit in depth. So here it is. This one is a good size. Um, we'll talk about size in a minute, but you can see behind me, good size. This one, we'll talk about color in a minute, but first of all, let's talk at what skills you need. Because sometimes quilts of illusion look much harder to do than they are. And that's the case of this one. So the skills that you will need, you'll be sewing with a quarter inch seam. So any sewing machine that will do a straight stitch, you will use a quarter inch seam. And if you do not have a quarter inch foot or you can't move your needle over so you can find that quarter inch, I do have an in-depth video about finding your quarter inch and different ways to do it. And I'll put that link in the description. So you'll need to be able to sew a quarter inch seam. Now, as far as cutting, we're going to be cutting straight strips. And let me show you the rulers that I like to use. So we don't have to use any fancy rulers. We're gonna be cutting strips with just a regular straight ruler. I think that one would be better if I show you here. So this is um, six by 24. That's what I like to use to cut my strips. So we'll be cutting strips. And then from those strips, we'll be cutting other shapes. And the rulers I like to use for that. So I don't lose a lot of different rulers. I tend to use the same ones. This one is 12 by six. It's a smaller one. So that one, I'll show you here. So you can see this is a little bit smaller than that. So I tend to cut my strips with the bigger one. And then when I need to cut shapes, this one is extremely handy. And then we will be cutting some half square triangles and squaring them up. So for that, I like to use this ruler. And this one happens to be a six and a half square. The one thing I look for, and you can use whatever brand that you like, look for a ruler that has this 45 degree angle. That's important and that will help you. So the rulers that I'm using are, just a regular ruler to cut my strips. I like to use a little bit smaller one to cut my shapes. And then when I'm squaring up my half square triangles, I like to use this one. And I'll show you one more time what that looks like. If you haven't squared up half square triangles before, Again, I have a video about that. It's just, um, I think it's a minute and a half. It just shows you exactly how to do that. So I'll link with that as well. So those are the skills that you need. You need to be able to sew with a quarter inch seam, cut strips, cut shapes, square up half square triangles. Because this quilt is done, again, I'm gonna step out of the way here to move the chair so I can show you. This one is done in blocks. So that's one block and it's just sewn in straight rows. So let's take a look at the next part of the quilt. And that is the fabric selection. 
Now with the fabric selection, I'm going to come back to the quilt. This one is a single color that has a spiral. So my color I've chosen is blue. And the spiral spirals out from the center. So it is one color, but there are four values of the color. So in this case, there's a light, a medium, a medium dark, and a dark blue. Can be your choice of what color. And I'll show you a slide of that. But let's take a look at some actual fabric selection here because what I found works best is using tone on tone fabrics. And what do I mean by tone on tone? Just like you see here. Uh, sometimes they're referred to as basics. Sometimes they're referred to as low volume. It just means they don't have much texture. Just a little bit. Now you can see close up, that one has a little texture, but really when you're looking at them, not much texture at all. I've just laid out a selection and then I'll kind of pick something from there. I've even put some that I'm not sure about. Okay. So what we need is a light, a medium, a medium dark, and a dark of that color. And we want to make sure it's the same color family. It hasn't wandered into a blue-green or a blue-violet. So the first thing I like to do is make what I call a value line. And that just means I'm going to shade my fabrics light to dark. Now I'm like, how long does this one go? I'll show you a tip for that in a second. All right, there's my value line. And I'm not sure where that one goes, probably right in here, but the texture might be a problem. All right, so there's my value line, light to dark. And I'll show you one of the tools that I like to use when I'm picking fabrics. It is my value viewer. And there's a green one and a red one. And the way you use it is you lay the fabrics out that you're going to use together and you put this right up to your eye. So when you look through it, it creates a filter and it filters out the color so you can just see the value. So red works on everything except red fabrics. The green works on everything but green fabrics. And these are thin enough that when you overlap them and look through it, it actually creates a grayscale. So you can really tell light to dark. So I will lay my fabrics out, look through both of them, and that helps me see what's light, what's medium, what's dark. We do have these on our web store. We don't have very many of them left. So if you're thinking, oh, I would like to get one of those, don't wait because they may be gone. But let's go back to the fabric. So what I want to select is one light, one medium, one medium dark, and one dark. Resist the temptation to throw in highly patterned fabrics. You want to let the design show. So I'm a little concerned about that one. And this one has a little speckle. So I'm thinking, I think I'm gonna use that for my light. That for my medium that for my dark and that for my very dark. What I'm after is the look, almost like you see on a paint sample, when you go to the paint store and you see one color that shades, that's what we want. So you can see I have light, medium, medium, dark, and dark. Now, what happens if I put in something very patterned? This is dark, but do you see how patterned it is? Well, let me show you on a slide because that is something that is somewhat personal choice, but I do want to show you what happens. On this particular one, you can see I have put in a more highly patterned fabric like you see there. And to my eye, what's happening is rather than seeing 
that beautiful spiral, I'm starting to see pattern in the fabric. And I don't want that. I want your eye to see the spiral. So probably instead of using something with pattern, I will use that. Now, these are, this one is actually batik. So is this one. This is a print and that's a print. So you can mix the batiks with the print. There's a lot of batiks that just have this kind of tone and tone fabric. There are gradated fabrics that do that as well. Hand dyed fabrics. You could even use solids for this. But I like that little bit of texture you see here. So I tend to use something with just a little bit of texture. So let's go back and look at what happens if I added more pattern. That's pattern in every one of the light, medium, medium, dark, and dark. It's a interesting, almost scrappy looking quilt. The problem is I've lost the spiral and I really want to see the spiral. So that's personal choice. If you want something that looks a little bit more scrappy, you can add more pattern to it. But here's the version I did. Light, medium, medium, dark, and dark. Tone on tone, you get that beautiful spiral. Now, I've chosen blue as my color. But you do have the option of doing a totally different color. Here's an example in green. So I did a light, medium, medium, dark, and dark green. And you can see that's beautiful too. So your, your choice, if you would like to do a totally different color. Now this particular quilt that I have behind me does not have any kind of border. I have just simply added binding to the edge. But you do have the choice if you want to make it larger or want a border. Now the quilt, as you see it here in the pattern, is 64 by 64, just like you see here with no border. But an easy way to make it larger is add a border. Let me show you what I mean. So here it is like this, and I've added a border. Now what I've done on here, let me see if I can get my cursor here. This border is about, I think about three and a half inches cut. But you'll notice there's a space between this outer border and the star point. If you come back to me, you can see it's right to the edge. So I wanted it to float a little bit more. So what I did is I added another strip, almost like a mini border all around the star. So now the star floats. And then I added the big border all the way around. That's personal choice again. If you want it a little bigger, one, uh, you can make this inner border that makes it float wider. You can make this outer border wider to fit what you need. Now the pattern has two size options. The quilt behind me is 64 by 64, but there's also a small version. And that is, hold it up, 24 by 24. So you can see on this one, I also did the three colors or the four colors of blue. And here's, just showing you, sometimes it's nice just to put a little table topper of a little quilt or put it on the wall uh, as well. Here's just a couple pictures of that little quilt. And you see that beautiful spiral. So this little quilt talk hopefully has helped you with the fabric selection, the skills that you need to make this quilt. It really is a gorgeous quilt. The pattern looks like this. It's called Summer Star. And it is available at my web store and also my Etsy store. And I will put the links in the description to this video. Now the Etsy store is download only. So if you order it from the Etsy store, we do not ship it to you. You need to download your copy. If you want a pattern shipped to you, then you need to go to the web store. And I'll put both of those links 
from our web store, we are shipping only to the U.S., but I will put a link to the store that I have with paper pieces, and they ship international. And here is, if you would like to visit me online, I have an Instagram page, Facebook page, and also a YouTube channel, which <laughs> you're watching me right now. But I will put a link to the web store or the web page, which is karencombs.com, that you can then click on to go to Instagram or Etsy or Facebook or YouTube. If you have enjoyed this little quilt talk, please hit like and please subscribe so you'll know when we do another quilt talk.